Let's look at tracks in a bit more detail. If you haven't followed the order that I have uploaded the videos and you want to learn everything about tracks, I suggest that you watch the first video on tracks and then watch this one. Let's start by looking at how we can have multiple tracks go to the same channel strip in the mixer. So I have this drum bit here. If I open the mixer, remember I X as in X-ray, you can see that I only have one channel strip and all of my tracks up here play through that. For whatever reason, you might want to do the same as well. So it's usually good for synths and drums. It's a bit different than creating a group of instruments. This way, we'll only use one instance of the plugin or instrument. So all four channels that I have here and all these regions will only load one instance of the virtual drum set, not for different ones, and that can save you some CPU power. Other than that, I almost always load different instruments and then group them together. To do that, there's the long way and the short way. Long way, you select the track that you want, then go up here to track, and then to other, and then new track with the same instrument. That will create a new track, so this one was instrument 3. That one will also be instrument 3. So the short way is you hold down option and then click on the duplicate button. And as you can see, that one is also instrument 3. If I try to make a change though, let me delete this too. So if I try to make a change, it will affect all of my tracks. So if I solo one, all will be soloed. If I take the volume fader down, it will be done on all of the tracks. So there's only one way of muting parts and that brings us nicely to the next topic that I want to cover. You can customize the track header components, meaning you can have different buttons on each track. To do that, either go up to track again and all the way down here, configure track header or the way I prefer it, option and T as in tango. That will bring up four categories. The first one is buttons. Anything you check here will be added on your tracks. Let's start with the on-off. This has a double function. The main function is that it turns a track on or off. When it's off, you will no longer hear anything from the track and you can save some processing power if you choose to make the plugins inactive. Let me show you. So in this one, I have some plugins uh, loaded. And as you can see, I can access them, they are active. So if I turn the track off, you can see that nothing happens. The track is off, we won't be able to hear it, but the plugins are still active. If I hold down Option and then turn the track off, watch what happens to the plugins. They become inactive and if I click on them, I get this message here telling me that they're inactive because they have not been loaded yet. So the other function of on-off is that I can use it as a mute button for the tracks that go to the same channel strip. So let's have a listen at the drum beat. Let's go back, option T, mute, you already know that, important shortcut. M as in mic, uh, solo, we'll mute all the tracks except the selection, important shortcut, S as in Sierra, and protect, let's check it and see what this does. So let's assume that you have finished everything that you had to do on a track, so you won't be needing, you won't be doing any other changes, you can protect it from accidental changes, whatever that might be. So when I turn protect on, let's go for with this one. I can't move the region, I get this message, I can't edit it, I can't delete it, there's nothing I can do. I can still of course, you know, solo it or mute it. If I want to make any changes or any edits, I will have to unprotect it. Let's bring up the options, 
freeze we have already seen that in the track inspector video so what's that video if you have forgotten about the different kind of freeze modes and what they do record enable and input monitoring these will be covered in the recording videos in controls you can choose to remove the volume fader or the panning knob you can also choose to replace the panning knob with one of the scents you have set so let's go here let's create a scent and then go back here and replace that so that will now be my scent and as you can see if I change it here it also changes down here let's go back put that back to pan okay down here we have the additional name column uh, which can be quite helpful so if you see here I have three instances of alchemy and all three of these are bases so I can choose any of these modes here let's let's leave it at that one software instrument setting name and it will display the name of the free, the preset that i have selected so you can see this one is the hypnotic synth bass white moments vox box lead if i change that let's say to the what i am it will also change here so even though all of them are base 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 i can see i can still see what the preset is let's bring up the options in other view options uh, control surface bars will have a bar appear right next to the number and that will indicate which tracks are accessed by the control surface you have connected I currently have nothing connected hence why we can't select this option but we'll look at that a bit later track numbers will have the numbers displayed on the left side of the track and that will be in ascending order so if I take this track here and put up now this one will be eight so this has nothing to do with the channel number it is simply just the number the order of the tracks here color bars you can color code the tracks so if i click on that one and then press option and c c as in color this uh a color pa palette will come up so I can just select a track let's say this one and I want to make that this color or this one I want to make that a blue color of course this this is the same for the region so I can just select a region and change its color as well now this is quite helpful for bigger projects it makes navigation and focusing on tracks much faster let's go back so groove track allows you to set one of your tracks as the groove track now that will act as the main timing reference for the other tracks so when you play your project back the rest of the selected regions tracks will adjust their timing to match the one of the groove track and the way we set it up is by clicking on the number so if i hover my mouse over it you can see that this little star appears so i click on it and this now is my groove track and also gives me an option to synchronize the other channels so let's say that I want this one this ones remember these act as a group and this one to follow my groove track I'll pay attention to the regions here actually let me open it down here so if I take it off you see that they move but if I select them again you see now that they have to follow my groove track option T to go back track icons you can select to move remove the track icons and the last one track alternatives you can you can have different audio file alternatives in the same track now let's look at that let's get rid of that let's take let's take this audio for example so i'm going to click on these little arrows right here and then select new now as you can see it says b and my regions have disappeared now let's drag in an, a dra an apple loop let's get this one and place it here 
Okay, so now B will have this upper loop. And when I go back to A, it will have my previous regions. Of course, you know, the name and the plugins and the settings that I have set will always be the same. It's just that I can have multiple uh, alternative audio here. And of course, I can select it to be more, to make it easier to navigate. So this one could be piano. And A could be, for example, electric piano. So I can have two similar types and see how they sound with the rest of my track. Quite helpful. Let's bring up the options. That, uh, well, that was actually the last of it. And you can go down here and, of course, you know, either revert everything to the factory default or save it as your default. So every time you open it, it will open like that. Another thing that I want to mention is the hide option. That is a great option when you have a large amount of tracks and you want to completely hide some without affecting playback. So you select the tracks that you want. So let's say base, all of these bases. Actually, yep. And now let's say that I'm done with this. I'm not going to make any changes. I can either go up here, I can either press H to bring up this option here and I can click on them, they will turn green and then press H again and they will disappear. Of course they will still play back. Actually, you know, let's try it with this one so you can see. Uh, so it sounds weird because they are following this track here, but you can see even though they're hidden, they can still they still play back. You can press the heights up here to bring them back, and if I want them showing, I will just click the heights again, and they won't disappear when I press that heights again. Oh, another cool thing in Logic, you don't have to do it. Let's try it down here. You don't have to click them one by one. If you want to, let's say, go from up here and unmute all four of these, you can click and drag down and you can do all of these in, the, in just one click. Now, another thing that I want to mention is what happens when we select a track. So by default, when we select, select a track, the regions are also selected. So I'm going to select this one, then drag the cycle off. So if I select 60 shuffle drum set, it would also select my regions. If I have cycle on and then select it, it will only select the regions that are within the cycle. If you don't want that, we can hold down option and then select a track. So if I hold down option and select track, you can see that, I, uh, that my track has been selected, but not the region. The 60 shuffle is still selected. And of course, you can completely disable that option. So bring up the preferences. Remember, command and comma. Then we go to editing. And then here it is, select regions on track selection. So if I uncheck that one and go back. Now I select a track, but the tracks are not selected. But now... It might, when I press Option, it will act. Uh, it will act the opposite way. So I hold down Option and now select it. It will select my region as well. Let's go back. Command comma. Now the last option here is select tracks on region or marquee selection. So when that is on, the track is automatically selected when I click on a region. So right now. If I click on a region, I just select the region and not the track. But oops, but if this one's on, now I select the region and the track is selected as well. When I have multiple tracks selected, only one will have the focus. So if I select this one, so you can see that the focus is on number eight. And that is important because the one with the focus will respond to our MIDI controller. So if you want to change the focus while having multiple tracks selected, 
you simply click on the number. while holding down shift. The very last thing I want to show you is something that I forgot to mention in the last video. Remember, you can rename a track by double clicking on the name. To go to the next track, you press tab. If you, going to, if you want to go back to the previous channel or move upwards, you hold shift and then press tab and it will go to the previous track. So tab, shift and tab.